get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See life's like a peach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Baby Einstein, Atari, many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today, I'm very excited. We have Ryan Lee, who I consider actually one of my early internet mentors. You may not know that. He's founder of Freedom.com, F-R-E-E-D-Y-M.com, which is a Netflix for lifestyle entrepreneurship. He's a former recreational therapist, gym teacher, and personal trainer. And in 1999, he started an online fitness business while living in his parents' basement and grew it into an empire that did seven figures per month. More importantly, what I see with Ryan is, um, you know, many people he's mentored have gone on to do even bigger things. Uh, So Ryan, thank you so much for joining me. Jeremy, I am excited to be here. We're going to have a lot of fun. A long time coming. <laughs> I always like to include a couple of fun facts. You know, I think most people know pretty much everything about you because you are open book, you write daily emails. You know, some, you know, most people know you have four kids and you were a college sprinter. Yeah. Too. Where did you go to college and sprint? I went to Ithaca College. Okay. Um, yeah, I was a sprinter all four years, captain of my track team, and uh, one of my or one of my proudest athletic achievements, um, I was part of the 4x1 relay, and we, had, we were two-time state champs. We, came, we just missed All-American. Even really? It was D- Division three, so let's not get excited. But we did have the school <laughs> record yeah. that lasted for 17 years. Wow. That's just awesome. What's, That's a work, what's a work ethic look like? Is that where you get the early mornings? Did you have to wake up and run early? What was your... We did, well, we did. It's funny, because yeah. when I ran track in college, um, at that time, Ithaca did not have an indoor track. So during the winter, if anyone knows Ithaca, New York, it's brutally cold. Like, the winters are awful. Um, we didn't have an indoor track, so what we used to do is we used to get up really early in the morning. I used to get up, I don't know, 5, 5.30, college time, really That's early. That's like, um, yeah. And then we used to have to, because we used to have to go and get in the vans and drive over to the other school, which was a few miles away, called Cornell. Cornell is the other college in Ithaca, New York, and use their indoor track. Mm. Um, so yeah, and for four years I did that. Um, that taught me to get up early. <laughs> Wasn't easy, but uh, not easy know, at all. And, and now with four kids, I, I have no choice. I'm up early regardless whether I like it. But now, but I'm so used to it now. Like I, I get up at five thirty now without without ever setting the alarm. So how old is your youngest now? Um, he is about depending when this airs. Right, yeah. right now, as speaking, he's about to be seven. seven um, okay. So they are uh, right now. They're okay. six, eight, ten, and twelve. They're all about to turn seven, nine, eleven. Yeah. 7, 9, 11, 13, I lose track. It's every two years. Amazing. So <laughs> uh, take me back, Ryan, to 1999 when you're in your parents' basement. What does uh, that look like at that time? Yeah, it, it wasn't pretty. Um, <laughs> it was fun, though. I mean, I had I graduated college in 94, so I'd been working for five years at that by that time at a children's rehab hospital. Yeah. I was um, It was 9 to 5. I did, um, I did adapted aquatics with the kids, all the recreation, the sports. I went at, sc- at night, I was, I was just 99, I finished up my master's degree um, in exercise physiology, so I was training clients part-time, so I would, my day was, was brutally long, I'd wake up really early, train a client or two, work nine to five with the kids, um, then go train, I, I usually trained athletes, young athletes, I would do clinics, I'd work with tennis players, yeah. uh, figure skaters, hockey players, and then at night, sometimes from like seven to nine at night, <clears throat> I would then take a class for my master's. Go drive all the way home, which is about forty-five minutes away. Work on my site for a little bit, and then come back and start the next day. It was it was long days. I like to highlight that because you know people see you now, right? They see oh, you know, he just wakes up and right. <laughs> see you now. Point. You write in an email, maybe. I mean, you talk about like you know, you'll wake up early, work for a few hours. You know, you have that lifestyle, but it wasn't always like that. You know, you had to build and grind for decades before getting oh, yeah. to that place. Oh man. Um, yeah, you know, so I, I, I started in 99, kind of just messing around. This was really early. This was before. Yeah, what did the internet even look like? How, I mean, it's not even easy to get a site was, up in 1999. No, it, was, it, was, it was almost all text. So I was, you know, I didn't start out teaching people how to make money online. I was a trainer and mm-hmm. I trained athletes. So that's all I did. So I would write articles about speed training. Um, medicine balls was, was really big at the time. 
and I couldn't do any video because everyone, no one had broad, you know, broadband. Everything was. Uh, <laughs> it was a lot of pictures, but even the pictures, Jeremy, at that time would take like ten minutes to download. So it was a lot of text, a lot of descriptions. Yeah. Um, I made money at the beginning selling first training equipment. So I hooked up with a training company. I would sell medicine balls, and mm. I used some free shopping cart. And then I'd have them drop ship and I'd make, you know, 20 bucks. Some months I would do well. You were ahead of your time. Now people are doing that on Amazon, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh this was way ahead of my time. Yeah. Um, that's when Amazon was just a bookstore. And right. then people started saying, well, could you design a training program for my son? And I would charge him money and I would start designing programs. And, you know, for years I kind of did this on the side. You know, some months I'd make 500 bucks. Some months I'd make 1,000 or two. And right. it just wasn't consistent. <clears throat> Fast forward a few years. I don't know how deep you want me to get into this. Yeah, story. go I, ahead. Yeah. Okay. So I'm working at the hospital. Uh, I've been there now six years. And on the side, I have this strength and conditioning site. And it's gaining some momentum. People are talking about it. They're like, wow, this guy's pretty cool, pretty good. Like, he's got some good stuff. And can, you know, I was work, networking with the NSCA, which is the National Strength and Conditioning Association. And then a big site comes along. Uh, big sports site and says, we want to buy your site. I'm like, really? This is right before the dot-com bust. Mm. And we negotiate, and um, they said, look, we're not going to give you a lot of cash, but we're going to give you, uh, I don't remember what the salary was, I think it was like 60000 a year, which was like more than double what I was making at the hospital. Right. I, never even, I never dreamed I'd make 60000 I'm like, well, the physical therapist maybe can make that, not a recreational therapist. They, gave me, they said, we'll give you sixty grand. we will give you thousands of stock options, and I was unsophisticated, and, like, but, and once we go public, which is going to be you know, in two years, that'll be worth three, five million dollars, and we'll give you just $500 in cash. Right, right. right. Done. Did that, left this comfortable job, went to this startup, and mm. after 50, 60 days, boom, the dot-com bust happened. Oh. Sorry, Ryan, we're letting you and everyone else go. I'm like, what? So I had to scramble, find another job, and I got a job at uh, a big internet publishing company called internet.com, and they interviewed me. They're like, oh, you, you know, you, it seems like you know internet marketing. You could be our editor. Do you know HTML? I'm like, oh, of course I do. I didn't freaking have a clue. Um, but, <laughs> but first of all, I'm I'll figure it out. Uh, and needless to say, that lasted about six or seven months. And I was in a cubicle commuting into the city, and it was like death. Every day, <laughs> every day, I took a little piece of, my, piece of myself die. Like getting on the train right. and all the guys like this. It was like zombies. It was brutal. I really, I get that people do it and they have to do it. I totally understand. Mm -hmm. I, I, I could, I'd rather die. I just couldn't do it. Uh, then I see an ad in the paper. And so they let me go. I'm like, man, I need a job. I just got married. And it said, I'll so this is you just got married at the time. I just got married. Yeah. We didn't have any kids yet. And I see one of these online bulletin boards. Hey, any runners who want to teach? Well, I was a runner. I, I worked with kids. All right. Yeah. And, and it was an alternative high school in the South Bronx. And they said, we're going to start health and phys ed. Do you want to be our guy to start the whole curriculum? I'm like, absolutely. So I went in, did great. But on the side, I'm like, you know what? I need to get serious about this internet stuff. So I finally launched a paid membership site. This is 2001 while I'm working at the, at the school. Yeah. And things really take off of there. Now, yeah. all of a sudden, first month's like five, six, seven thousand. I'm starting really? DVDs. Oh, yeah. Wow. My buddy had cassette tapes. I'm not cassette tapes. How are you getting the word out? How are people finding it? Was because I've been, don't forget, for, so after I was let go of that other site, I said, I want my site back. So they gave me my site back. So I've been building this for okay. since 99, 2000, yeah. 2000, about three years. Just, yeah. And I knew I, I studied marketing, so I was building my list, giving it really good content. And I had thousands of articles stuff. And I said, wow. you know what? Now, if you want this, it's paid. It's like behind a paywall. And that's also not easy to execute at the time either. What, what were you doing <laughs> to actually collect payment at the time? Some people were not happy either. Um, at that time, what did I, I use? Like, ClickBank. Um, and I, I found some like free script and I hired some college student to like, I found online, I gave him a couple hundred bucks and he did it. It was all this kind of jury rig kind of stuff. It was, and I, I was building every page with uh, front page 98. So every page was manually done and like right. there was no program, there was no word, there was none of that stuff. Uh, and then, so I was, while I was at the hospital, uh, not the hospital, I was at the school at that time building the site, for about six, seven months, it was like five, six, seven thousand a month and I told my wife, look, I'm making a lot more part-time than I am full-time. Yeah. If I could do this full-time yeah. and dedicate my life to it, I think maybe we can get to like 100,000 a year. Like that was, that was the dream. And yeah. she's like, you know what? I support you. Let's do it. Yeah. And that was early 2002. And I've been full time on my own, you know, for now 15 yeah. years. Uh, and since then, you know, for years it was all about strength and conditioning. Then, then other trainers like, can you teach me how to build this? I'm like, absolutely. I love talking business. 
And then other people are like, well, if you could teach these trainers, and my trainers started having really good success, and a lot of them are like the top people on the internet now. Yeah, yeah. You could teach everybody. So now here I am talking to Jeremy at Inspi- <laughs> Inspired Insider, living in New Canaan, Connecticut with four kids with a friggin', you know, a nice house, two acres with a pool. Um, I still pinch myself sometimes. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very blessed. Yeah. I mean, Ryan, one thing that I love when I follow your stuff is perspective. And it's a few things, right? There's, you witnessed some really horrible things at the Children's Hospital, mm-hmm. right? What was, what was one of the worst things that you saw? God. Um, yeah, uh, God. It, it was, <laughs> so it was a Children's Rehab Hospital. Yeah. Now, obviously, Rehab Hospital, the, the good thing is it's rehabilitation. So it's usually after they've been through something traumatic or had surgery. So the idea is to get them there to heal. It's not like a mm. hospice where everyone's going there to, to die. Sure. Um, the most shocking thing was when I first started working there, they don't use the word die. The term on the, on the chart would be the patient expired. Really? Yeah. Wow. Anyone who works in a hospital knows that's what they say. They, they expired. Jeez. It's just like, that was kind of chilling. That's horrible, yeah. Uh, I mean, I remember when I was, so I was an intern there. I, my, between my junior and senior year, I did an internship at that hospital. And they liked me so much, they kept the job open for me for an entire year. Wow. Um, as, as the adapted aquatics, I didn't even know what the... So but I remember being an, an intern and one night... So I worked with the teens at that, at that time. They were like age 12 to like 17. And there was one girl, I'll never forget, Adriana, at night. And she was the sweetest girl, like 17 years old. At night, she would just cry in pain mm. because she had something called scleroderma. And it was basically like the hardening of her arteries, her skin. And it, it's a fatal... And she ended up... Uh, dying, but you just hear her crying in pain every night. So tough to watch. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I've seen kid. I saw um, one kid who was a 17 year old who was a quadriplegic because his friend's brother was drunk or, oh, or high God. and a gun and shot him in the face. Wow. Um, another kid who had broken legs, uh, another little one, actually, he, was, um, he wasn't paralyzed, but he had been shot in the face by his dad who was high. Yeah. Another kid who was thrown out of the window by his parents. One kid who was uh, riding his bike and was hit, and his whole head was. Oh, if yeah, you ever seen a half deflated basketball? Yeah, that's what his his skull was. Oh my god! Uh, another kid who was seventeen who was quadriplegic because in the backyard, you know, kid from Long Island was diving and. Ugh. I, yeah. so, I mean, I can go on and on. It, yeah. It, it, this it, was a daily. I mean, this is the people you were day. working with. Yeah. Every day, and I love the kids. Um, and it's funny. I went back to the hospital maybe eight months ago, first time back in years, in, in like a decade, yeah. and I had a mastermind group, that was, and we, we met in a hotel, and, I, and I, yeah. I, I'm still in touch with a few people that work there, and this woman Debbie used to work there, I said, I want to take my, my, my group, I have like seven or eight people, and come to the hospital and throw a party for the kids at night, and yeah. we did it, wow. and, and one, of the, one of the guys who used to be a kid when I was there, really? he was a teenager, came just to drive up to meet me, and now he's 35 years old, is married, has two Jeez. kids. Uh, so it was really, really cool to see. That's awesome. Uh, but it was, I, it wasn't, it's funny, it wasn't a depressing place. It was a very inspiring place right. because you'd see these kids, especially kids with things like cerebral palsy, spina bifida, who've had 20, 30 surgeries. I mean, in, in, yeah. they're in cast half their life, and they're working their butts off in physical therapy and right. working so hard and never complaining, right. never complaining. Right. And you see that. And yeah. I would, you know, I, then I'd go on out the weekends with my friends and they'd be like, oh man, I'm so pissed off. You know, I, uh, I, you know, I, I, my car had a flat and I had to get a towed. I'm like, you know what, man, you can walk. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it, nothing to complain about. Yeah. And yeah, you know, look, everything in perspective. Yeah. But I really, I just don't let anything bother me because yeah. after being in after that, after seeing that six years, every yeah. single day, that's all I saw. It became such a, it became so normal for me to see kids in wheelchairs because that's all they were. They were all in wheelchairs. That when I'd go out and yeah. see kids like running around, it was just, it was weird. Like, yeah. I'm like, what do you, because I used to have a, like, I'd be in the gym and they'd say, okay, Ryan, this is your group. And there's 18 kids, nine of them are in a wheelchair, two are in a stretcher, one is blind, you know, one's a double amputee. And here's a ball, go do, a, go do an activity. For <laughs> Good luck. Hour. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, you learn to, by the way, you learn to think on your feet, you learn to get creative. And people are like, oh, Ryan, you're a good speaker, you think on your feet. This is easy. Right. Yeah. Ask me questions. Um, right. So, uh, but it really does put everything. Like, you know what? I do an email promo. It doesn't go that well. So what? Um, right. So right. puts things uh, in perspective. Yeah. And, and the other side of things, after you know, you said that you obviously took over this alternative high school gym teacher, but that was like a really rough area, right? I mean, the the people. What was that like? Um, so that was in. If anyone knows. Uh, 
So you got New York, you got New York City, right? And then you've got the South Bronx, which is like the roughest area in New York. And then you've got a little area of the South Bronx called Hunts Point, which is the roughest area in the roughest borough in, in New York City. Right. So, and it was alternative high school, so it was yeah. all for students who couldn't <clears throat> hack it in the regular schools. Yeah, yeah. Most of them, 90% had been arrested at some point. Right. Um, a lot of them had their own kids. I remember doing a gym class, and it was a small class. There were like maybe eight kids. And there were five girls, and three of them were sitting on the side because they were all pregnant. And they were, you know, 15, wow. 16. Wow. Uh, but a lot of gangs, um, a lot of kids who had been shot. Yeah. Um, you know, a, few, a lot of kids who have since then are either in jail or who have been shot and killed. Um, what was you know, one of the worst things? you? Because you have to navigate this even though you're, you know, a gym teacher yeah, at the it, time. It was, um, what was the toughest? Uh, you know, there, there were a few, a few things. There was one time where this one kid – who was in a gang. He was, I don't remember if he was in the Blood or Crips. I mean, he you run been, fast, but a gun travels fast. I run fast. I can't run faster than a bullet. Right. He was maybe in the Bloods. The other guy was in the Crips in the school, and they kind of flashed signs at each other. I used to know all the gang signs from all that. Um, and they said to me, uh, one of the, the directors of the school said, you know, Mr. Lee, can you w- walk this kid out after because the other gang threatened to shoot him when he leaves school? I'm like, what oh are you, out of your mind? Like, no. Yeah, like, I don't think so. Please. Um, there was one time, so I would take the kids across the street to the park. There was a park right across from the school because the school's an old factory, old converted factory. Um, and I took them across, and there was a, a kid there who was a student with one of his friends. You know, a lot of these kids want to look tough and act cool in front of their buddy. So yeah. he's, he's out there with his buddy, and I'm with my students, and a couple of them are females. And this kid starts hitting on one of the girls. I'm like, I'm like listen, man, I'm running a class. you got to low. And the other kid comes up to me before me. He's like, yo, Mr. Lee, we're not in school anymore. You better back up. And I don't know if he had a gun or something. Like, And I just had to stand my ground. I'm like, yo, you better back up. Luckily, we didn't <laughs> you fight. You said that? Oh, yeah. Oh, no, God. You, you know, I'm like, just back away. Um, so, yeah, so there was some, there was some time. Another time I was walking with kids back from the park, and there was a bunch of other kids walking the other way, and there was like a little scuffle, and then we left. And I found that one of my students had been – he wasn't stabbed, but he got oh – like, the other kid had a knife and kind of sliced. Jeez. And I'm like, why did you tell me? He's like, oh, no, Mr. Lee, it's no big deal. It happens all the time. I'm like, yeah, so it was, uh, it, was, um, it, was, it was interesting. Yeah, because uh, you so talk about the commute, you know, being <laughs> yeah. like – people like being like zombies, but that is – I think I'd be stressed every single day, you know? You know, what, what they, I, I, I tell stories where – they would even though I park I'd park right in front of the school all the time. What I didn't know is like these um these local people, these crackheads would come and steal your little blinking mirrors, your side lights and all this stuff, and they kept stealing mine. And what you would do is when I would come back to school <laughs> the next day, I, Jeremy, I couldn't make this something. is crazy. I yeah. would jump back to school the next it's day. Like and breaking as, bad stuff here, yeah. As I as I pull up to the light, the guy would be like, yo, he'd, I can't do the whistle. And he'd pull me over and they they'd have these little garages, these one garage thing. and he go, yo come here you're missing your your side mirror, your side lights i drive around he t- he's like oh what is that and uh 79 acre all right hold on i got that and he go- i swear to god jeremy he'd go into his garage come out with a garbage bag wow a garbage bag filled with lights and he'd basically sell me like mine back <laughs> <laughs> and they did after like and, and it's getting expensive i'm like man i don't i, I don't i wasn't making any money and then they they st- then they started stealing my side view mirrors and <laughs> I, then, How do you even deter them from doing that? I mean, so, so here's what here's what we did. I said, yeah. look, I can't afford to keep getting new mirrors. He's right. like, right, I got you covered. He's like, sit in your seat. So I sit back in my seat, and he takes a, a mirror, traces out with a pen, cuts it out, and glues it. So you can't now rotate the mirror. He's like, all right, good. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, well, what if someone else wants to drive my car? You can't rotate. He's like, oh, no one else can drive your car. It's yours. So there you go. <laughs> I, so, so then, so I'm like, you know what? I think I need to start doing my own thing full time, and maybe not <laughs> come to the school anymore. <laughs> so, what do you? What wisdom do you impart on your kids? I mean, because you've seen like the worst of the worst neighborhoods. Yeah. Um, right. I yeah. I tell them to first of all really, really appreciate what you have. Um, and now as they're getting older, so my oldest one, um, you and I are, are both Jewish. She's she's having her bat mitzvah, and she has to do a mitzvah project. So she goes into this area of the south of South Norwalk, which is the next town, ta- which is not. A good area, and she works in a homeless shelter mm. with kids who are homeless. So right. she goes after school, um, like once a week, and works with those kids and helps and does activities and stuff. So I think it just shows her that not everyone lives. Gives her some perspective. Yeah, yeah, because it's you know it. We always want look. We want to live in a nice neighborhood and great schools, and it's so it's like fantasy work, like fantasy. Like if anyone comes into New Canaan, Connecticut, they walk around like, oh my god. Like I've never seen anything. Every car is a Mercedes or BMW, and everything's so nice and clean, but. 
it's, it's like a little bubble. So I want them to right. understand other things. And I tell stories all the time about the kids I used to work with. And, yeah. there's, and um, I just really want them to appreciate what yeah. they have. What yeah. stuff that you try and instill on them that they get sick of hearing? Like, Dad, that, we already know that. You keep repeating it. What's, what's things that just um, – I picture like John Wooden, the coach, just repeating yeah. things. <laughs> what do you, what uh, wisdom like that do you just repeat over and over that they're sick of by now? You know, I, I, I always talk about just being a good person, like being a mensch, like doing the right thing, being friendly. When you see someone's parents – you know, hi, Mr. Smith, nice to see you. Hi, Mrs. Smith, just being personable because that is, it's so important and to yeah. feel good about yourself and love yourself yeah. and um, great, I want you to study, I want you to work hard, I want you to get good grades, but yeah. that's not everything. It's, yeah. it's almost kind of like my wife is like all about the grades, she does the work with them and I'm like this little softer, more personal development stuff. But I talk about that a lot yeah. uh, and always being kind to other people and being a good citizen, like going out and helping others um, being charitable, uh, but having fun. Like, that's, that's the thing, too. They know, like, we're going to have fun. I wrestle with my kids. We're active. But um, it's not always work. Like, there's t- like, family is the most important thing. So right. we love at night. Like, if they don't have work or it's a Friday or Saturday night, like, all of us getting on the couch and watching a movie together. And, and that, that important kind of being together. Yeah, yeah. Family. Ryan, talk about your wife's influence on the business. She's been there since the very, very beginning. Mm-hmm. I'm sure she's had a huge influence on your yeah. business trajectory too. She is. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she's got a PhD in psychology. She's very, very smart. Um, she's, she keeps me grounded. We were yeah. to get, we've yeah. been together since college. Wow. So we've been together since we're like 19 or yeah. 20. So she's been with me yeah. at the beginning. And even when we were graduating – I said, Janet, look, if we're going to be together, I just want to let you know I'm never going to make a lot of money. Like, I'm, I'm, maybe I'll make 40 grand, but that's it. And she's like, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. So I knew that's a keeper. Um, How does she keep you grounded? What does she do? She, so she's, I, I tend to, you know, I used to have no filter at all. I still don't have much of a filter, but I have some. I used to have zero filter. Like, I would say anything that's on my mind. And she's the opposite. She's like kind of the conservative, like, Ryan, think before you speak. Maybe you shouldn't say that. And there were times when I was kind of going off the rails. Like I was, I was traveling a lot. I was going to all these events. I'd stay like out. Like business drinking. related stuff. Yeah, yeah. And all business stuff, speaking at events, kind of drinking my own Kool-Aid, um, making more inappropriate sexual reference. Like it just – I was saying things and doing things that were, were just not – Who you are. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was, I was getting – I was in this – I felt like I'm in high school like with the wrong crowd and they're all – and it's just – it wasn't me, and she's like, you know, let's stop, like, stop being an ass. Like, if I would do something, Facebook to write something, she'd be like, you know, you shouldn't have said that. I'm like, you know what, you're right. Let me take that down. Um, so just keeping me grounded, and you know, definitely the more conservative side of me. And yeah. I, I always think about, it. I'm like, what would Janet say if I, if I wrote this email and did this post? Right, is, right. Is this borderline? Is this, is this too racy? Is it too sexy? Like, whatever that thing is, and just. Be because she's she's this like superhuman person. She was president of the PTC. Uh, she just everyone who knows her is just like, how, how does she do this? How does she have four kids and do all this stuff? And um, I try to kind of be a li- little bit more like her. <laughs> so, you know, part of the perspective do you know comes from too. You hit a health, like a rough health patch a mm-hmm. couple years back. Um, talk about that a little bit and so, and how you you handled that because you know in the midst of living life and working and right. you, that stuff comes up for people. Yeah, you know, it was, I, I was taking on too much. Um, things were getting stressful. I was, I had, you know, I was launching new companies and doing new partnerships and some things would work great, some things would be a disaster. Staying out late, traveling too much, um, not eating as well, just everything kind of happened and I started getting pain in my feet. I'm like, what the hell's going on? Like. I went to a, an orthopedic guy, I went to a podiatrist, I went to, I mean, you name the doctor especially, I went to, no one could, they kept taking x-rays, x-ray after, no one could figure out what was wrong. I finally went to a rheumatologist and immediately he looked at me, my toes were swollen, my fingers were swollen, everything. he's like, oh, you have, um, you definitely have an autoimmune and he's like, and, and while you cannot 100% diagnose this, he's like, based on you, based on what you have, based on your blood test, you have psoriatic arthritis, yeah. which is like an autoimmune thing. And he said, yeah. so what we're going to do is we're going to put you on methotrexate which, you, you know, Jeremy, you, you're a doctor. It's, it's a chemo drug. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, well, what do you mean it's chemo? I'm like, chemo? He's like, yeah. I'm like, well, 
He's like, well, you're gonna have to be on it. We're gonna have to come in every week for blood tests. He's like, I said, but doesn't that lower your immune? Isn't that? He's like, yeah. He's like, and you know, we've talked about this before we, started, before we started recording. He's like, just make sure you're not near any, you know, not surrounded by like people with germs. I'm like, what are you talking? I got four kids. Right. Are you out of your effing mind? I said, is there any other option? Yeah. He's like, no, that's it. I said, so you're telling me, doc, every person who comes in, and I said this to him straight to his face, you're telling me every single pa- patient you have that has this, you put him on methotrexate, he goes, hundred percent. I'm like, well, this. I'm like, but this is not. I said, this is a symptom of something. This isn't, you're just treating. Right. He's like, no, 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 no one knows. Because obviously doing. you have a health background. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, look, I, I know a little bit what I'm talking about. I said, I'm just going to ask you. He's like, go get a second opinion and then come back. I said, all right. So I went to like a, a naturopath and I went to two naturopaths and they both said the same thing. Let's change your diet. Let's reduce your stress and do all this stuff. And you'll start. And I immediately, I, I reduced. Well, I, at first I did an elimination of gluten, sugar, and dairy. And right away, like, oh my God, Jeremy, it was so bad. I, could, I couldn't snap my fingers. Really? It hurt that wow. much. Um, and now, you know, I finally started feeling better and gradually, and now like I'm back, I'm healed. I never went on the drugs. I just try to watch what I eat. I, fi- I find if I'm under stress or if I'm eating stuff that's I sh- like, if I have a lot of pizza, like I'll feel it the next day. So I just, I'm just monitoring that. Yeah. Um, I'm back. I'm, I've been exercising. I'm back at full strength. Even tonight, I have my first ever tennis match. We, I believe really? we went to the tennis club and we're playing doubles and I'm playing with the club versus another club. I, they have no idea what they're in for because I'm not a very good player. I play like once a year. So we'll, I said, but I told my buddy. You took the lessons, I think, didn't you? I said, look, I'm going to give it 100%. I don't, care, I don't know what's going to happen, but I, I'm going to go all out. So we'll see. Uh, but so, the, fact, the yeah. fact that I do it feels great. So the biggest difference was the dietary changes? That's what made all the difference think, for you? I think for me, it was dietary and the stress reduction. Yeah. I sold off some companies. I closed down yeah. some others. And I'm just like really... Yeah focused on one thing on freedom and just kind of just yeah. doing that and it feels so much better yeah. and just taking it easy i don't have to take on so much i don't i was always striving because it's funny you, you see now the big the big trends jeremy everything what's the big word hustle you gotta hustle you gotta hustle 24 7 you gotta keep hustling hustle hustle yeah. and for what like i now i believe in hustle but i call it smart hustle yeah, yeah. so i'll get up early and i'll work for a few hours, hard, straight, very focused on my biggest movers, the biggest things that have the, the, the most impact on my business. For me, it's email. Um, but I don't do it 24 hours a day. When I come home, I told my wife, I'm going to work from you know 7 to 3, whatever that is. And then when I'm home, I'm home. My computer's yeah. off. My phone's off. And I'm with you and the kids. And that's work for me, just not taking – and how much do you really need? How much do you need to be happy and satisfied? I don't care about scaling to a billion dollars. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't I really don't need a billion dollars. I don't want to be poor. I like making money. I like the stuff money could do. I like sitting here outside talking to guys like you. But um, you know, yeah. and getting attacked by <laughs> a bee. Getting attacked by bees. Um, <laughs> I, I I would run and jump. In, I would run and jump in the now. pool. <laughs> Person. Yeah, um, I've been stung many times, so it doesn't even bother me at this point. Um, but, uh, it's the first time in an Inspired Insider.com interview someone's been stung on camera, if that happens. Yeah, yeah. it didn't actually sting me. Okay. It just brushed by, but I did just kind of flip back. What the hell was that? Is that going to be the screenshot? Yeah. Like this? <laughs> exactly. So uh, I, I looked very smooth on that. But um, I don't even know what the hell it was. No, so, you know, with that, you basically reevaluated not just your health stuff, but your you streamlined your business stuff. So you you cut out the excess fat and really focused on what was most important at that time right. from a business right. perspective too. Yeah, from from yeah, obviously, you know, personal life. So so I I almost I didn't travel for god, I didn't travel to speak for like almost 5 years. Yeah. I just said that's it, I'm done. Um, yeah. it's not good for me, for my health, for my family, for my marriage. Yeah. I don't want to miss any activities for my kids, so yeah. I just stopped. I, I turned out every opportunity. Trimming the fat there, trimming the fat um, with the number of businesses I run. Just focused on this one yeah. thing. And then trimming the fat in what – so by, by focusing on the one business and focusing on one thing, it made my day much easier and more focused because now I don't have to think about managing and balancing 100 different things. It's like yeah. here's one thing. Here's the number one mover for my business, the number one pr- productivity thing I should be doing. Boom. And yeah. just do that. It just makes it much easier. And you get a lot more momentum. Yeah. Ryan, what's interesting for me was uh, – you didn't travel for a while, um, but recently you did speak at Dan Meredith's event in the yeah. UK. And what I found interesting is I love your stuff. You know, I've been following you forever. Um, study your stuff was you know in your one of your mastermind groups because right. I respect you so much. And uh, 
I also love Gary Vee's stuff. Um, and it's you were both speaking at this event, and you both, I don't know if you'd say, but it's almost completely opposite perspectives in, in yeah. certain avenues. Like, what's your, what was your take on that? Um, yeah. Speaking alongside Gary V in a boxing ring, and you kind of different messages. We we have, uh, and I like Gary. I've known him for a long time. Yeah. We, we have some similarities. Yeah. We absolutely have some similarities. Um, especially our background is eerily similar. You know, both. Jewish from, from almost in the same town, ta- like a few miles apart. We both, our first business was both baseball card businesses as kids. Right. Like we have very similar backgrounds. Um, he, and I do, look, I do believe in hard work, right? I, yeah. I believe I'm not in, trying to pit, pit you against no, 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 them. No, no, I'm no, just I, curious no, of the perspective. I, I no, no, yeah, yeah. I, but, but I think where we veer off, um, yeah. he's like, you know, you got to hustle your face off and you got to keep working, working, working. I think his, the way, he, now we just divide up our time differently. So his I think the last time Gary talked about it was, I think he says he basically works from 6 or 7 in the morning to 11 o'clock every single day, and then the weekends are his with his family. Yeah. So that's, that's the way he divides it. Yeah. That, and if that works for him, that works for him. If that works for his family, great, good. Um, for me, um, I don't do that. I, I work from 7 in the morning to like 3 o'clock, and then I coach baseball. Like I do all the other stuff. Um, Gary's more motivated. Like he, he's even said publicly many times. This isn't. I'm not speaking at school. That yeah. he wants to buy the Jets. Right. Right. Oh, That's for his sure. Thing. Oh yeah. And he has a a media company that has hundreds and hundreds of employees. And I get it. And cool, man. Gary. I, and I hope he buys the Jets. Maybe I can get some good tickets. But <laughs> I have no desire to buy the Jets. Right. I have no desire to 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 do, to have a, a 500 million dollar company and and 500 or 600 employees. Zero. I, that has zero interest to me. You know what I like. Like, I, honestly, like, I like this. I, I, and right after this, and you and I, we had to move this interview up because in an hour, I'm picking up my kid. Uh, she's walk, it's one of the last days of school. She's walking to town with her friends, and yeah. then I'm going to drive her. So, so I like that. Um, so I'm okay taking less uh, yeah. and, and really enjoying every minute. I'm not saying Gary doesn't enjoy every minute. Yeah. I know he loves what he does. I know he loves speaking. And he, yeah. there's, nothing, there's nothing he'd rather do. And when I'm working and when, I, when I'm in the zone, I love it. I love getting up in the morning. I really do. I love getting up in the morning and yeah. driving to the coffee shop and working and writing and talking to all my, my tribe members. I love it. I'm in the zone. Time flies. Um, but I also, as, as much as I love that, I also love being with my family. Yeah. And I love being with my kids and my wife. And I love going to the club and playing tennis. Like, I love that stuff. So that, that works for me. Everyone is different. There might be people watching this who have no family and this, they just love work. They're so engrossed with it. That's all they want to do. And, that's, and if you're happy, good. That's all I want is for yeah. my people, my tribe, and my clients and members to be happy. Yeah. And if, if going to a billion dollars makes you happy and building a big business, great. If Having I, I call this a lifestyle entrep- lifestyle business, right? right? I'm a lifestyle entrepreneur, and I'm okay scaling back because it's not always about being bigger for me. Yeah, right. So uh, Gary's mess, and there's a lot of stuff that I agree with Gary, especially the social media stuff that he talks about. Um, we just differ in time allocation. That's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I don't curse, and I don't curse as much as him. No, not anymore. <laughs> um, talk about freedom. What you know, freedom.com. What gave you the idea to start freedom? Um, you know, look, I'm not perfect, Jeremy. As as I know, it's hard to believe. It's hard I to believe. I know it's shock. I know it. You just uh, destroyed my world. No. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm perfect. <laughs> uh, so I, you know, I kind of, ba- you know, I was bouncing around. I would do a group here, or do a group there, do a product, and I just felt like I was I was spinning my wheels. It wasn't as cohesive, you mean? Yeah, it just wasn't. And I'm like, I just want something. I want a brand. I want something. That it's just not just Ryan and Ryan Lee. Like I want something that's a little bit beyond just me and something yeah. I could do that grows beyond me. Um, I just came up, you know, I, I'm always talking to my clients about what are the benefits, what are the benefits of what you sell, why, why are people going to buy or invest in you. And for me, it, it's, it was never about teaching people how to make money or the, the fancy cars and the big boat. If you want that, great. I'm not into that flashy shit. Um, but it was always about the freedom. Yeah. And I'm looking, and I'm, I'll never forget, my wife and I were on vacation, my kids are getting ready to showering, and I'm just like, freedom. I'm like, freedom is it. That's really what it's about. And I just started going, I just went to like GoDaddy. I'm like typing in freedom, all the different kind of unique spellings. And all my kids, my three, I have four kids, my three girls, their names are Lauren, Jordan, and Cameron, all with a YN. Huh. Um, and I'm like, why? Freedom, F-R-E-E-D-Y-M dot com. And it was available. I'm like, Really? 
I typed it again just to make sure. I'm like, this actually is a pretty good domain name. Yeah. And I bought it. I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it. And I kind of played around with it a lot. And I'm like, yeah. I went back. I'm like, you know, as I was reevaluating my business and what I want to do, I came back to, and, and this, is, this is a lesson for all of you, yeah. look back where you've had the wins, where you've had the big successes. For me, my first big success was the membership site. Yeah. What I was yeah, I mean, you was, had the continuity summit. I mean, you yeah, were yeah, teaching totally. people continuity. Absolutely. Yeah. And that was my thing. That was my wheel. And I went and I was good at leading people. I'm good at getting people motivated. I'm good at teaching and breaking down, giving them specific strategies. I'm like, why not just do this for the masses? Why not do this and build it under the Freedom brand and put all my energy? Yeah. And then, so that's what it became. And the inspiration for the whole Netflix thing, I'm always looking outside of my industry, seeing what's different. What yeah. do I like? And I'm, you know, we, we have the Roku box and my kids like Netflix and Hulu and I'm yeah. looking in the way it looks and the layout. I'm like, why can't I build that for lifestyle entrepreneurs? Yeah. And that's what we've done. And every single, we had a new training, Jeremy, every single day. And, every day. And wow. part, with guys like you, who we said, Jeremy, can we, like you, you came up to me and said, look, I have this great training program. Yeah. I want to gift it to your members. So now we have your training program within our community. Yeah. So we're giving, so we have all this training and we have the community um, and coaching, so it's all like in one. And, and I wanted to make it an absolute no-brainer. So it's a buck a day. That's yeah. the thing. If you can't, if you can't invest a buck a day, I don't know what I can do for you. Right. But that's the idea. That's the concept. Yeah. Um, and it's going really, really well. Members love it. Retention is at an all-time high. Um, people keep referring other members, and I'm having fun. How has it evolved, like from the beginning idea to what it is now? How has it be- changed? Because because I know you're always iterating. You're always changing yeah. and, and making for, improvements. Yeah. First version was I said, it's freedom, it's going to be, I said, let me kind of come back to where I started on this kind of journey towards being introspective. And I went back to health and fitness professionals. I said, freedom's going to be for health and fitness professionals. Yeah. And it was a little bit different, the structure of it. We updated it once a week. Um, we had our, our forum within the, within the site. It wasn't on a Facebook group, so it wasn't quite as interactive. Yeah. And you know what, Jeremy? I, it was going well. Um, people liked it. The feedback was good. But it wasn't, Great. It it was. People said it was great, but it wasn't what I felt was like. This is the. Yeah. You weren't hitting the masses. Would you think that's what was bothering you? I don't know. You know what it was? I because I'd been kind of. I left the fitness industry for so long, and so many of my people were not fitness as well. And everyone's like, yeah. And people started joining this who were not fitness professionals. Yeah. And I'm like, and I almost couldn't keep them out. I'm like, you know what? Let me just open it up. Yeah, like, let yeah. me open it up and let me change the whole structure yeah. of it because it's it's yeah. good. I love hearing this story of how it evolved because I mean, that, yeah. if you look at Facebook, the same thing, right? I mean, it just started as a college campus. It wasn't for everyone, right? It, and it wasn't yeah. even for, it was just for Harvard. Yeah, and right. Then, and 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 I, it's funny because I use that example a lot, Jeremy, when I teach. It was everyone says, well, Facebook's for everyone, but it, it was for Harvard and then for Ivy and then for all colleges, then for high school, then for the masters. Right. So for me, it was almost like health and fitness. I kind of thought I'd stay there, but I wasn't 100% sure. And then I said, you know, let's open it up um, and changing the structure of it so it wasn't just a once, a once a week. I said, how can I deliver something that no one in their right mind would ever try to duplicate? Yeah, no I one would try to compete because there's no one on the – I don't care how good you are. You're not doing one training a day. You're yeah. not. And we are. Yeah. Um, I didn't know that until you just said that now. And I'm just – in my mind, I'm thinking, are you crazy? One training a day? How do you even, how I mean, do, you even do that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's but members are just they come in and they're blown away and they're like I can't believe you're doing all this like where's what's the catch how is it only a buck a day like what's what's is there like some big upset I'm like no this is it um, and the way I look at it is I could give them tremendous value I can help hundreds of thousands of people and on a selfish note I could build a really nice business too because if you think about it if you have 30,000 members at 30 bucks a pop Thirty dollars a month for thirty thousand members. It's nine hundred thousand a month. Could live a pretty good life on that. Um, for sure. So, yeah. you know, it's from a business perspective, it's good for me, for my family, for for my my sanity. I'm focused on one thing, and it's great for the members because I put all my time and I put the money back in, and we build more resources and keep doing more stuff. So what are some of the most popular courses in uh, the, in the in Freedom? People love the case studies. Yeah. They love case Which studies. case study do people resonate with? They like the ones, um, you know, I, I still have a lot of people who follow me because of recurring revenue. Yeah. Um, it's funny, I some talk, I saw my wife just walk by and say, um, I still have people follow me because of that. So I have um, the case studies where people have built memberships and communities from nothing. So one, one that's really popular is one of my guys, Jason, is a nutritionist. 
and he built a he, I coached him through he built a private Facebook group yeah. a paid group at 97 a month for nutrition and within his first I think one or two weeks he had 80 members wow and he, well, that doesn't sound like a lot but 80 at 97 months it's almost 100 grand almost, yeah that's a yeah. six figure business and he didn't have a big list he had a very small list and he didn't do any kind of launch he didn't have affiliates or JVs he, didn't, he just He's he he's develops relationships like I teach him, and he just said, "Oh, by the way, here we go. This is the new thing." And he said, "And so we did a video where I interviewed him. It wasn't it, but it was literally just looking at a screen. Show me the emails you sent. Right. Show me how you manage it, how you run this, and like people behind the scenes. That's all we do because yeah. I am I'm you know me, Jeremy. I'm the no fluff, the no bull. I don't care about the four hours. So just show me how you did it. Um, and now I know this story is different. This this show is different because we talk about the story, which which is great. Yeah. Um, but we're just like 100 percent tactical." Here's what he did. Here's how he did. So people love the real world case studies, especially showing people how they built a business online yeah. that has nothing to do with make money. Because right. it's one thing to say, "Oh, I had a membership. People paying ninety seven a month. What do you teach? I teach them how to charge ninety seven a month." Well, of course, a hole. Um, but <laughs> if you do it in nutrition, and I have a guy who does the same thing with um, what is it? Uh, triathletes. Another guy has cyclists. Another guy's um, doing it for like men and you know self esteem. So you could do it for anything. So. Yeah. I love that. And then all of our courses, I did a full day training where people pay 5000 bucks just to learn about continuity. Yeah. I put that whole workshop on there. Yeah. I did this whole course. You have so much it. content. I mean, from I, all your, your summits. I still haven't even released like a fraction of it. Even, even the dot-com expo, which was like 40 hours of yeah. training, yeah. is not even all yeah. in there yet. So we're always, yeah. we, the whole Freedom Fest, the first one yeah. we did, all of that content's been put in yeah. there. And Damon yeah. John spoke of that one, right? Big D. Yeah. So how did you? Well, how did that come about? How did you decide to, to have I him wanted, come? I wanted a keynote. I wanted yeah. someone who I think would have some um, some name recognition. Yeah. So I, I'm like, all right, Damon John. You know, I know he's New York, so he's not that far from Connecticut where I did it. Um, I there was like, you know, hey, want Damon to speak? Contact us. I contacted him. I hit it off with his right hand man, uh, and that was it. They said, okay, here's you know, if you want Damon, he's it's going to be keynote. Here's the price. I paid the price. And there you go, Damon John on stage. He was going to do a whole talk. I said, you know what? Forget the talk, Damon. Just sit down on stage yeah. with me and let's just do it. But by the way, funny story about Damon. <laughs> I knew you'd have a funny story. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm notoriously uh, frugal. I don't like to spend a lot of money. I don't want to spend – if I'm going to spend money, I want to put it into the member experience. Right. So Damon was like in his upstate New York house and part of the contract was, okay, we'll send the car for Damon. Now – Whenever I would go to the airport, I always use this guy, Jan. I, I met Jan at the YMCA. <laughs> he's, Jan is uh, he's probably about six foot three Polish guy. He looks like he's like, like he could break you. Like a hand. mafia or something. And he's like, hello, Ryan. Um, so <laughs> I sent Jan to go get Damon because he's like, you know, 50 bucks cheaper than a limo or 100 bucks cheaper. So. I, I, I'm in between a, on his break, and Damon's guy is already at my event. He goes, hey, Ryan, come here. He's like, um, Damon just called me, and he said, there's a guy who is like, you know, like this Polish guy. He thinks he's in like the Polish mafia, and he picked him up in a soccer mom van. <laughs> is this the right guy? I said, yes, that's him. So when Damon came, he's like, he's like, Ryan, just meet me in the parking lot. He's like, I can't roll up in the soccer van. Uh, he's like, what are you doing to me? And uh, he's like, yeah, I was scared to call. Because I didn't know if he was going to hear me and like pull me over and leave me in a ditch. <laughs> like you know what, David? Right, I'll I'll take care of you on, and then driving you back home, I'll make sure I get you the limo. So that was the uh, so I saved like hundred. That's the Damon John story. That's what, I love that. <laughs> so Ryan, how do you decide to stop doing one thing and start another? Because you you're doing something, for instance, like your health stuff that's successful, that's doing well, like the Facebook group, right? I was in it. It's doing well. How hard is that for you to decide to shut that down? Because you could have easily just kept it going or other yeah. things going. Talk about your thought process behind focusing as opposed to kind of keeping those up and running. It's hard. Um, it's something I've struggled with. I still continue to struggle a little bit with it. I, I, I'm a lot better than I was. There, there's a lot of people like me, Jeremy, who have this kind of entrepreneurial ADD, we'll call it, and yeah. just can't stop creating and love it and love just – doing new things. And when I get bored, it's really hard to keep me engaged. And um, there was, I mean, I've, I've probably sacrificed millions of dollars over the year by just shutting things not down. focusing or not yeah, or shutting it down. Yeah, it, yeah. It's been, it's been challenging for me. It yeah. really. So how'd you do it this time? 
Because it seems like you're because, really focused well, right because, now. Because freedom um, allows me the ability to still it, – it, it has everything I'm good at, the membership, the leadership, all that stuff. Um, but it also allows me to have the flexibility in terms of front end, in terms of cr- marketing and doing different webinars and doing different training. And we're going to do an online summit that's going to lead people in. Um, every time I'm doing case studies, it allows me to kind of still use that creativity. So it's still giving me that creative outlet. Yeah. Um, and focusing on my strengths as well. But yeah. look, even today, I mapped out a whole th- I spent two hours, which I shouldn't have, looking at some other newsletters I want to create. You know, so, it, I, look, I struggle right, right, with right. daily. Yeah. I try to take my strengths and kind of go with... Yeah. I, I'll, so I'll... I, I ask selfishly because I do struggle with that too, so I'm curious how yeah. you curtail your ADD a little bit. I'll go with it, I'll go with it a little bit. Yeah. Because if I, if I just try to say, you know what, I'm not even going to think about it, forget it, I'm not even doing it. I, I'm not happy and I feel yeah. like, oh, I feel a little off. You'll entertain it for a little bit. I'll entertain it for a little So I have, uh, for me. Then you'll I, call Brian Kurtz and he'll yell at you. Yeah, no, exactly. Uh, so I'll entertain it for a little bit. So I spent an hour or two today kind of sketching out things, what it would look like. Even started creating a little sales page for it. And then I'll just put it away. But I do entertain it a little bit. If it's really, really good, um, maybe it's something I'll explore. But I know if I'm going to explore now, I'm not doing it myself. Yeah. I'll be maybe the idea guy. Yeah. And I'm going to hire someone and let them run it as yeah. their own kind of business within a business. Yeah. What's That's on the what horizon right now for Freedom? I know you you had a, conf- a Freedom Fest last yeah, Freedom year. Fest. Yeah. I don't know if you have another one. What else we, is... We were planning to do one, but it's going to be on hold for a little bit. Yeah. Um, so I think we're going to make it an online event. I think we're going to do Freedom Fest. Like it's going to be an online summit. Maybe 100 speakers. Like really... If I'm going to do something, I'm going big. Yeah. Uh, you know, continuing to just every day... We, you know, if we continue to add members every day and the retention right now is 95, 96 yeah, percent, um, it's just it just continues to grow and people love it and they're referring other members. So I'm, pr- I'm pretty content. You know, we have the, I said 30,000 members before I, I said that because that's kind of my my goal um, yeah, yeah. to get too soon. So I kind of have a number that I'm going for. Yeah. Uh, not that like once I get to 30,000, I'm stopping. Right. I want to keep going um, because I love impacting lives. Yeah. Uh, you know, big dream. I would eventually love to have. A, an event that has 10, 15,000 people like in a stadium. That would be cool. So we'll Talk see. Talk about, I mean, people who want to grow their online business and membership. What are some ways that you're going to execute on to get to the 30,000? What's, you know, what do you think is going to work that other people you know, so, could be doing for themselves too? We, we try everything, right? Yeah. We try all different types. Um, the, honestly, the, the big thing, Jeremy, is the paid traffic. When you can get paid traffic to work, there's, and you could not even if you, if you could just break even on paid traffic, yeah, you're a millionaire. Yeah, you're, you're a million. If you have even half decent back end, half decent, you are literally a millionaire. Um, but so few people either take the time to learn it or, you know, they're like, oh, I just want to set one site up and never touch it again, and and that's not reality. Yeah. Uh, the the when you can get paid traffic, you can keep scaling and scaling, and the sky's the limit. Yeah. It really is. That's. That's the key, and it's something I wish I would have really, really learned years yeah. ago. What's working these days with paid traffic that people should be looking at? We're, we're doing even with paid traffic. We're doing paid traffic to webinars, and the webinars to sell the membership. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're having some webinars where we're not only breaking even, we're making money on the front, and then everything after that's recurring. So we found tremendous success. You just, you just have to be good. I think the more you speak, the more you're comfortable, yeah. the more you do interviews, the better you get at this stuff. Yeah. yeah. That's working really well for us. Does it is it a live webinar or is it like we're doing an evergreen? Both. We're doing we're doing both. Um, right now we're back to doing live. I, I'll tell you this, Jeremy. It just works nothing, better. Nothing converses as well as live. Really? It just doesn't. It, yes, it actually takes time. But the, here's the thing: it's like, well, you actually have to do the webinar. Yeah, but you know what? If you get if you do a webinar and you get a hundred members at three hundred bucks uh, at thirty yeah. bucks a month, it's three thousand a month. It's, it's yeah. worth an hour, don't right. you think? Right. Uh, for sure. And most people are just so close-minded or they're, they're not living in reality. They think that I'm going to set something up and I'm going to make millions of dollars. And, and I'm sometimes the uh, – I, I throw a little cold water on them. But I, I want to be realistic and I'm right. never going to overpromise. I'm never going to say that, look, you sign up with me and you're going to be making a million dollars a year within 12, six – it's just not, real, it's not realistic. Right. Yeah. What's the big success story you've seen come out of Freedom so far? Um, because I don't know, you know, people yeah, I mean, are posting uh, well, on look, Facebook. Because it, it, it's it's there's lots of 
I, I don't know if anyone yet, because it's still new. Like yeah. we're only six, really six months into this. Um, or maybe then go back because you've coached a lot of oh yeah, yeah. entrepreneurs. But, but, but we've had but in freedom already. We like yeah. the guy I interviewed for the case study right before. She said, "Oh, Brian, by the way, for, based on that thing you said uh, two days ago, I just made another two thousand bucks." Yeah. Th- those you know baseball terminology, lots and lots of singles, lots of doubles. Yeah. Um, in terms of going back yeah. over the course, I mean, people fr- in the well that pays industry. for membership for like yeah, six but, years. So oh yeah, yeah yeah absolutely yeah I mean people like Mike Geary who's done eight figures. Um, um, Elliot Hulse, who's the, the seven figures. Um, there's lots and lots of people who said they were influenced by my, yeah. my training, by my coaching. I mean, I've done coaching calls with everyone from, you know, like Marie Forleo to Tim, uh, Tim Ferriss, Lewis. So I've, Ramit said, like, I've talked to everyone about coaching and recurring revenue. So uh, I wouldn't say th- they're necessarily my students, but there have been a lot of people yeah. who've been through trainings over the Talk years. Talk about the speed coaching. You know, so because what I, what I love yeah. about the speed coaching is in a very short period of time, you kind of get to the guts and the essence. Yeah. Um, what kind of it's questions fun. do you ask? What do you do in the speed coaching? So, so with speed coaching, what I'll yeah. do is I'll open up every once in a while. I'll yeah. say, okay, 15 minutes with me yeah. on Skype or phone, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, and we just, we just dive right in. That's it. There's, it's, this isn't a strategy session yeah. where, it's, where it's a disguised sales call. It's literally coaching. And we've had things where I've completely transformed their business. Yeah. I mean, completely yeah. transformed. A lot of times... So if, if they're already doing well, if they're already making six and, and they haven't gotten over the, the barrier to seven yet, a lot of times it's me just kind of honing in on their messaging or their focus and saying, okay, here's your numbers here. Here's your numbers on this promotion. Let's forget this. Let's do this and let's make this tweak. And like, oh my God, that was worth a million dollars. Then there's people who have been just kind of spinning their wheels for yeah. years and I'm just, I get into like the heart of what they're going to do. Yeah. Here's your hook. Here's your brand. Here's your next step. Uh, yeah, you probably can't name names or anything, but um, what was one of those transformations? So people get an idea of, you know, maybe hearing yeah, that will help them transform whatever they're doing. I mean, so so, God, there's a million of them because um, I've done so many of these. So there, I'll, I'll think of someone recent. All right, so I, I did a call with uh, this, this woman Shannon recently, who's a who's a fitness professional, been a fitness professional for years, has been in every coaching group that other people have done, and kind of spinning her wheels, and by the end of it. I came up with, okay, forget all that stuff. Because she's like, I don't know, do I do boxing? Do I do this? I said, forget that. Here's your brand. It's going to be under your name. And here's the first product you're going to do. Right. It's going to be here. This is going to be the lead product. And then we're going to map out two or three other products down the road. Let's put that to the side for now. For now, here's your brand. Everything is coming under this umbrella. Here's the first product. Yeah. And she's like, oh, my God. And as I'm hanging up, the reason I, I brought her up, because this was like a week or two ago, she's like, I love you, Ryan. <laughs> um, which is really cool. And then one guy I did a, a call for, uh, what the heck was it we were working on? But he, 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 he said, oh, because we were talking about his offer. He was, his offer was muddled. He had three levels of membership. One was like 47 or 97 or 197. It was crazy. I said, forget that. Here are the two levels you're going to do. Yeah. Here's the price for this one. Here's the price for this one. Here's exactly what you're going to include. And, he, and then on this, so we do it Skype. And then at, after we hung up, he wrote, you are the greatest person in the world. <laughs> so... You know, how many other guys can get to do that? Get to get to make money, help people, and have people literally shout out, "I love you," or "You're the greatest what, person in the world." What was it about the offer that you clarified or simplified? Because I it, feel for, like people do yeah. confuse their offer. They make it. Well, he had too he had too many things, and it was too much too much of a decision. I'm like, yeah. well, do we get this? He's like, well, you could have unlimited coaching and this, but only one call, and then you could have two calls, and and it's like, well, what's the difference? And it, you didn't know what to do. Yeah. So I said. Um, there's a guy, Sean D'Souza, who I've, I've talked to before and I've interviewed him for one of my podcasts. Yeah. Uh, he had a really, he's a really interesting philosophy of you just have two prices. You have, here's this thing, right? You get A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Here's the other thing. You get A, B, C, D, E, F, G, but you just add one extra thing and you call it the bonus. So this is, I gotcha. say, gold. This is gold plus so it's bonus. it's very simple. A- and a very, very small price increase. So you get A, B, C, D, E, F, G oh, really? for 27 a month. A, B, C, D, F, G plus this bonus for 29 a month. And that's it. Um, and it's, ve- it's very, very cool. Um, so that was a strategy. We went for him for his business. Yeah, I love that. See, we're um, getting tactical, Jeremy. Come on! <laughs> we'll, we'll do both. I like the tactics. Um, you know, since it's Inspired Insider, Ryan, I always like to ask the lowest point um, for you business-wise and how you push through. Um, lowest point business-wise? You know... A couple of years ago, 
I, I, I did something that was probably I shouldn't have done it. I was doing a, I, I, there was a trainer that I knew. And I'm not going to say his name, but yeah. he worked with a very famous TV personality too. And I figured because of that, and I like this trainer, he's energetic. I'm like, because of that, I think we could build a whole platform around him. And I partnered with, with a guy who was one of my clients who's a really great traffic guy. And we spent, man, we probably spent each almost 100000 Wow. On the stu- and we spent like 10 grand with programming and then it didn't work so we had to start over. And we, for like two, two and a half years, and then I brought on two guys. I said, look, come on as free interns and then w- once we start making money, you'll get paid. And I just, I couldn't get the damn thing to convert. Um, Why and do I you just think? Felt- First of all, this, this celebrity person started getting some bad press. So I think that hurt it. People didn't want to promote it. Um, I don't know. We just could. It, it was the copy was outside of my. It was it was more in the CPA network, which is cost per action, which is a little bit hypier. Um, it was the, the a site different copy stuff, style type of thing. The very very flashy, very aggressive, very hypey, lose ten pounds in ten days type of stuff. It just never felt really comfortable, yeah. and I feel really badly because this guy was this trainer is a great guy, young kids and was really depending on it, and it just. Yeah, you know, he had a big book deal, and he said with the book he got this big book deal because he said, "Oh, we're going to get so many leads with this." And I just, I feel like I let him down, I let my partner down, I let the other people down, and I just, that was a that was a tough, that was a, a bitter pill to swallow because I'm like, "Oh, yeah. here I am, Ryan Lee, I could do anything." And uh, I, it was I what I learned from that, and that was another thing that kind of pushed me into freedom is like enough of this, like enough of too chasing, too complicated, too complicated, g- getting a few things removed from where my real thing is um and i just i'm like i can't i can't do that again and I, I let too many people down so i'm like i'm not taking up partners again i'm not that was my last partnership i'm never gonna have a partner again if i'm doing it i'm doing it my way the way i know is gonna work what i'm good at and i'll bring on team members and i'll, I'll make them part of the team but i'm not partnering in and dropping the ball and taking on too much anymore yeah 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 on the flip side the proudest moment what's been one of the proudest business moments for you um, it's a great question. Well, I mean, look, financially, it was cool with, with our supplement company when we hit like seven figures in a month. Yeah, that I want to hear about the supplement company. I yeah. have that written down here. You know, most people don't ask about it. Most people don't even know you do that or did that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I really don't talk about it too much. Yeah. I don't love to Why talk is that? about it too much. Because, um, you know, I started, the first, so we have a couple of them. The first one I started as more of a back end for fitness professionals. Uh, and it went really, really well. We were yeah. the back end for all these big guys online. It's amazing, uh, yeah. Yeah, and uh, but me and so my so I took on. Um, I had a guy that was one of my clients. I made him a partner, and we didn't always agree with the direction. They kind of wanted to spend a lot of money and time on on the research and clinical studies. Where I'm like, we need to put it back in marketing. I wasn't always present. I dropped the ball. I wasn't fully engaged. So I got a lot of people on. We did really well. But other tra- there was a, one of our top trainers left and competed directly against us, took all our main guys because wow. he would do things and say things that we wouldn't say and do, right. make promises and, you know. It's not cutthroat. Gonna, it's pretty cutthroat. Oh, it's, it's very, it's, and that's what it is. It's a cutthroat business. So I just, I don't like it. <laughs> I, I, I don't. So I'm not, I'm never starting another supplement company. Um, right now we're, we're, we're working on exit plans for me. So, um, some things I can't, I can. Some things I can't talk about. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it was, it was a good experience. Um, made, made, some had some big wins, had some big losses. Learned a lot. Learned that there's a lot of people who are going to say one thing and do another. Uh, yeah. Learned that you, I'm a trusting person. Yeah, yeah. But Naturally, you'll trust. You, yeah. You, you, here's what it taught me that you can't rely on other people to generate your business because we were that first model we were really an affiliate driven business yeah yeah and we relied almost 100 percent on them yeah. and once they stopped promoting we're like w- now what um that's why i'm like we need to learn paid traffic yeah. we need to need to generate our own customers when you yeah. can do that you become independent you could do whatever yeah. you want yeah yeah that it's, was it's scary even if it's not an affiliate or if you're on a platform that's producing customers like Amazon yeah. or whatever, you still don't have control. Right. Even with uh, – and I like Kindle. Um, and I was a big fan at the beginning. But what happened is it became so flooded that now if you had – because it's so common, like a paleo cookbook, right? There's 5,000 paleo cookbooks. Right. And now because, because there's so much 
so much competition. The prices that now they all sell for ninety nine cents. You know, Amazon takes thirty cents, so you you get like seventy five cents. How many are you gonna sell? The problem is there's not enough profit. Right, right, you, yeah. you don't get the customer name. There's not enough profit for you to go out and buy customers. So you're kind of just sitting back yeah. waiting for. And yeah, it's some passive money, and it's and some people if you if you create a lot enough of them, a couple hundred, couple thousand bucks a month, absolutely. But it's changed. Yeah. So. I will not. I will not do something now where I can't generate my own customers. Yeah. So Ryan, you go from you know in that in that business, the nutritional business, seven figures in a in a month, um, and you had told your wife, "Listen, I'm not going to be making more than forty thousand dollars." What's the feeling? That, that was like a proud moment, even though right now you don't love the business, but you know <laughs> it's still um, pretty remarkable what you did with it. Yeah. What were you uh, thinking at the time? What uh, what was going through your head when you did the seven figures in one month? Like, wow. <laughs> Just, I, I still couldn't believe it. I'm like, I can't. Now, look, the I, it wasn't like seven figures in my pocket. Right, I understand, right? yeah. Um, but it was still a lot of money. Yeah. Um, I. How do you celebrate now with wins? You know, here's the thing. Like, I... I, I I've never really been all about the money. Like I've just, I don't know why. I, I don't know why it is. Um, I've never, it's for me, it's always been more about the excitement of starting something new and starting a business. Okay. And, and it's, it's more about, oh, that was a cool platform. But I, I don't, even It if like I comes have, and it passes. It doesn't, yeah. I, yeah. Because I, I, here's the thing. I, I, Jeremy, when I say I don't spend any money on myself, I don't spend any. I don't buy anything. This is a shirt my wife when we went s- skiing, ski butternut. Like you know, I'm wearing, I'm wearing you know, shorts. I'm barefoot. Like I, I, I don't care. I, I could care less. Yeah. I've never, I've never been motivated by the money and the commercial stuff. It never, it never mattered to me whether I was happy when I was making twenty six grand at the hospital. Yeah, and I, I'm happy if I'm making you know twenty six grand in a day. It, I don't know. I, I yeah. didn't go out and celebrate. I didn't buy anything special. Although it was the one thing that was pretty cool. Because again, I, I do like to save. I'm conservative. Is when I went to get a, a different car, and I'm, my wife's like, "Oh, why don't you get a Range Rover?" I'm like, ah, "I don't care. I'll, I'll, I want to drive my Honda. Should just get a Range." So I went in and just like, you know, I look young. Um, I look younger than I am. I think some people tell me that. I'm, I'm about to be. 44. I agree with that. Yeah. For yeah, sure. yeah. Yeah. My forties. Um, and I come in and this, you know, you can tell this guy kind of thinks I'm like, oh, he's this young guy. And uh, I'm like, God, I'll take that one. He's like, All right, well, do we need five? I'm like, No, no, I'll just. How much is it? I'll just write a check. He's like, What? Um, and just writing a check, yeah. you know, no lease, no nothing. Just here's a check. Here you go. Give me the keys. And just driving out ten minutes later yeah. with a Range Rover was yeah. pretty cool. That was pretty cool. It's a freedom um, moment for sure. Yeah, but yeah. Um, you know, we have our house is is big enough for us. It's fine. We got property. We got privacy. We're in a great town. Great schools. Um, yeah. I yeah I I'm. If you're not, you know, I've learned long ago that if you're not happy, if if you're not happy without money, you won't be happy with money. It yeah. just it just exaggerates who you are. Yeah. You are. So I've always been happy without money. I'm happy with money. If I lose it all, I'm still yeah. happy. Yeah. As long as I, ha- really, Jeremy, as long as I guess maybe working all those years at the hospital really had a, a profound impact on me because as long as you know my, perspective, my family yeah. is happy, yeah. as long as my kids are happy and healthy, I'm good. Yeah. I don't care. I don't care about the car. I don't care about anything. Yeah. So speaking just, of. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, that's it. You know, speaking of the, uh, you know, talk about the frugalness, right? So most people, you know, there's $25,000 masterminds and you're in a $25 mastermind. <laughs> How did that start? How did you meet Brian Kurtz? Um, I became friends years ago with Michael Fishman. Yeah. Uh, who runs a consumer health summit. And we, we would chat and we'd have lunch a couple times. And he's like, oh, you got to meet Brian Kurtz. Such a great guy. And then I remember we went to Michael's house and Brian came over and we just hit it off right away. Yeah. And I knew Jim Quick was a guy who lived in Stanford as well. And I was sitting with Michael once. I said, why don't we form a little mastermind? Right. Just local guys, me, you, Brian, and Jim. And we'll meet you know, every, every couple months and that's it. And that was how it formed. Yeah. And I came up with the whole $25 where you know, <laughs> Joe Polish has his 25K group. I'm like, Brian, he tra- first of all, I'm never spending $25,000 for anything. Um, 
and let alone fly. And I told Joe this all the time. There's zero chance of me. He, I'm, in, I'm in Connecticut. He's on the other side of the country in Arizona. Right. I said there's zero chance, first of all, that I'm paying 25 grand. And second, that I'm flying out there three, four times a year. Just, it's never, Joe, it's never going to happen. Um, so we had there. So our take is 25 bucks because that's probably right. what it costs for us to each put in for like, you know, breakfast. Bagels. Um, yeah. Bagels. Yeah. Um, although they, be call- they all became gluten free. So that was the idea behind <laughs> it. Right. Um, but now that Jim and Brian moved to the West Coast, it kind of we do some Skype once in a while. But I am forming another group with, with a few other guys. Um, no one knows about this. I'm not revealing their names. Very, very well known and successful. Two are in New York City. One is near me in Connecticut. Um, but at, no, two in Connecticut, two in New York. There's five of us. And uh, the idea was, though, it was all guys, uh, and, you know, in the, the, I think we're all in the 40s. Uh, or, or late 30s or early 40s, yeah. and we all have kids. So it's something, and I called it, what did I, I love coming up with these names. I think I called it Super Dads or something, the Super Dad Mastermind, where it's because it, we're, we're all in the same boat, we're, and it's all about priorities because one of the guys in this group used to be in a mastermind with some very well known internet marketers. I won't say their name, right. but, and it was three others and him, and he was the only one who had a kid, and they were all single. Yeah, and they're you know flying a off a little to different here. lifestyle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go to Asia and speak for a week. I'm gonna, and we're like, and he's like, I can't do that. Like it was a lot of stuff they do and say. It's different when you have kids. You know, right. you're you're, sure. you're a dad. You're family. Yeah. So um, yeah. it's it's five of us. We're all dads. We're all in the same boat. So that's kind of cool. So I I'm a big fan of forming. What's the best thing that came out of the twenty five dollar mastermind that you remember? Uh, like a big breakthrough someone had. Um. Well. There, there's been one or two, but you know, unfortunately, I don't want to. I don't want to hold things back, but I can't. Yeah, no, that's cool. We, yeah, always, if it's not always, you, you can't talk about it. Yeah. Yeah, we always say that whatever happens in twenty five dollars stays in twenty. <laughs> like, it's like Vegas. Yeah, that's... exactly. So I, I can't out other people. What about uh, for you? Any any um. For, for, for because, me, because I know you know what's interesting about that peer group is you really hold each other accountable. So I'm sure yeah. they. Yeah. They really hold you to the fire too. They do. Um, and now, because I, I was the guy that every month I come there, I'd come up with a different, this is it, this is what I'm doing, and then the next month it was something else. So I feel like such a hypocrite because I said, now this is what I'm doing, and if I come back to them and say, I'm not doing it anymore, they'll be like, Ryan, what do you, you said you're going to focus on it. So it does, it, it really holds my feet to the fire and holds me accountable. Yeah. So I, I'm grateful for them, and we, we've all become such good friends. Yeah. They're like, they're like brothers. So, Ryan, I appreciate your time. This has been awesome. I have one last question. Um, before I ask it, where should people check out online? They should just go to freedom.com, yeah, F-R-E-E-D-Y-M. M.com. Uh, you can go to ryanlee.com as well. Get on my list. I also um, I update it. I, I email almost every day. You're going to get lots of tactics. You're going to get some stories. You're going to get some fun. Um, follow me on Facebook, facebook.com slash ryanleefan. I do some unannounced live Facebook uh, Q&A. So uh, come on yeah, in. Yeah. We'll have some fun. So last question, Ryan, um, some ideas you can give away that you're not going to be able to execute on because you're focused on freedom. What are some, because you're always an idea person. You're always coming up with great ideas. I'm wondering what are a few right now that you're like, this is going to be big. I don't have time for it, but if someone were just to do this, this would be awesome. Um, well, Any? there's one, the one that I was working on this morning is big, but I'm not giving that away because I think I'm going to do it. Uh, <laughs> you, you, <laughs> no way. No way. Um. Uh, you know, I do execute on a lot of stuff. Uh, I, I'll, I'll say this. Okay, the, the model yeah. that I'm doing, this whole Netflix thing, yeah. um, there's opportunities in many, many markets yeah. for that. There's, yeah. opportunities, there's opportunities to go into any right market yeah. and just stop. There really is. Yeah, because I ask because you are – you see trends. I mean you do trends before yeah. like the continue. I mean you name it. You've been doing it and then it kind of grows from there. So I'm just wondering what you saw as yeah. big uh, – I, 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 Look, I, I think the the big thing is is with the email, with the communication, is getting away from trying to sell so hard and doing these short daily educational edutainment type things, yeah. building the, the the relationships um, and offering a really soft sell on the back, especially some type of recurring revenue. Yeah. Um, I see print newsletters. I think they're going to make a comeback. Print newsletters. Yeah, I think print newsletters are going to make a comeback. I think there's 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 going to be a segment of the market that's like they don't want to be online all the time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the millennials are like, oh, everyone millennials. But I'm telling you, there's still 
if you go to the beach, you go to the, there's still people reading stuff. There's still something about getting it in the mail, and now it's yeah. so special, so different. I think the people who understand that uh, are going to have some. There's going to be some fun things to play with. Yeah. I'm looking to do some fun things. Yeah, Ryan, thank you, and thank you. You are part of the reason responsible for the name Inspired Insider through our coaching session. So I remember, yeah. I remember you and I spending four or five sessions go, going back and forth with names. Yes, I remember that. So. so uh, so, I'm, I'm glad, and it's so cool to see what you're doing and all the great yeah. stuff. So keep up the yeah. great work. Yeah. And thanks for having me. It was my Everyone honor. check out freedomwithay.com. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, Jeremy. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. I'm